Oh, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the AnchorCast and Stardew Valley. It's fall of year two. And my goodness, we've got a lot of things to do. And for that, I'm going to turn everything over to a voiceover. Because we've got a lot of stuff to do, and I don't want to take up time and thinking about trying to do talking and uh, working at the same time. So for that, I will turn it over to future Mongo to record the uh, voiceover. Uh, and here we go. So heading into fall year two, I've come to the realization that the game isn't meant to be played just over the course of a couple of years. It's it's meant for more of a long-term investment. At least it isn't, well, the way I play it. And it doesn't help if you're doing a playthrough series for, say, YouTube, with the express purpose of showing off the game in near real time. So the choices are put out content where someone watches you endlessly farm for hours with no excitement, um, you just putzing around the farm and doing other things, or you do quick bits here and there to showcase specific areas of the game or topics. Me, I got the game and I immediately began recording playing. So what you see for me is the first time I'm seeing it as well. Well, I mean, to a point, I, I started a whole new game after about a couple of episodes to refine my skills and learn things so I didn't waste a bunch of time because time actually is a very important part of this game. Now, I've seen videos from people who go into years 200 and 300 just to earn ridiculous amounts of gold, spending most of their time doing a setup and then sleeping the rest of the time in between until they get to their, uh, you know, where they want to harvest or do something. And if I had already been well-versed in the game, I may have done something like that too. And as of now, multiplayer is a thing for the PC version, so everything I'm doing is pretty much old news and not very fresh, but I, I still enjoy doing it. Though I may... Consider revising my previous directed uh, of doing a whole week smashed into one hour long video and may opt for something else like this, like doing a voiceover and then just condensing everything down into maybe 20 to 30 minutes, just picking up the highlights. I don't know. My style is very talky and not structured. I mean, I have this high, this uh, 50,000 foot view of what I want to get done, but it's just merely an outline. And for this week, I simply ran out of time and had to record most of the video first over the weekend and then forgot that I had to redo a voiceover. So here I am pushing this out as fast as I can. So what's on tap for this week? Now, the community center has been completed, so the biggest chunk of our tasks are done. I can start to begin skipping these daily trips to check out the board for these quests. I can focus on what I want to get accomplished for the next season, which is going to be winter. You know, with the greenhouse employee, I can make crop money throughout the winter, and I don't have to worry about other things, uh, like advancing other aspects of the game and uh, looking for scrounging for gold. Because here in fall, I had this great opportunity to make some serious gold so that I can do other things in winter and get ready for spring year three. Well, the biggest can be, uh, the biggest issue can be that I'm almost to the end of year two, and I still am still mostly just farming to make money. And while I can approve efficiency, like finally <laughs> that I figured out I can, uh, you know, use the hoe and the watering can to, to do multiple squares at one time by holding down uh, because I, I've upgraded them. Uh, by winter of year two, I want to be ready for other things. And, I, and I'm not willing uh, to waste time on just farming and, uh, you know, and do other stuff. So winter is going to be great because I won't have to worry about that. But I want to have cash on hand ready to build other structures and get things ready so I can go right into year three. Because year three, I'm going to stop focusing on the farming and spend more time on the relationship aspect of the game. That means I have to be have the house ready for, like I say, a spouse or kids and then, you know, get things to the point where I can really focus on the birthdays aspect and the, and the gifts and doing all that. So what's a roadmap like that look like? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But first, we have a little bit of a cutscene here with the wizard. Uh, at this uh, weird looking block that we had in front of this cave. We wanted to go into this cave, we couldn't before. But, uh, you know, every so often I have to keep coming back and checking other places because I forget that there are, are, are other things that happen in the game that if you don't happen to notice them. Like every time you go in the bar and sometimes there's something with Clint. But uh, here are the wizards telling us that he was married and goes on his long, you know, horrible, uh, you know, backstory about how he was married to some woman and then, you know, he drove her away for whatever reason and uh, it turned her into the witch. And the witch is, you know, of course, who flew over the farm that one time and uh, <laughs> brought, uh, you know, turned one of our eggs into a void egg, which is a great thing because that actually helped us out because we can make a ton of money off of the void mayonnaise, which will come into play later. But he also goes on about how he is, uh, he lost his magic ink and he can't do anything. So, uh, that's a metaphor for something, I'm sure. In any case, we have to go get the magic ink, but we have to unseal the cave. 
And in order to do that, we need to go down into, uh, we need to get a talisman, and that means we have to go in, into the sewer and go talk to Krobos, and that'll point us on this, this other quest to find the talisman. Now, as you can see, uh, there goes the witch. Now, if the witch is, uh, witch is, uh, out, uh, is supposed to be sealed in the cave, why is she getting out flying around? Figure that one out. But for now, we're going to go to bed because day one, which we have done absolutely nothing but get the farm ready, and that's kind of a problem. As you can see, we have nothing to put in the box, so boop, it's on the day two, and there you go. One of the problems I find is that the first day of every new season, you run into an issue where you set up the entire day and you get nothing done, and it really takes the time out of it. The great thing about it, you know, we, we have to still go around and catch all the mushrooms and do all that. We don't have time to do everything there is in a day. And that's one of the things in year three will help us out because there's some things that doing for the, uh, the magician or the wizard as well as other things that we can get done that will uh, make things a little bit more efficient. But... Uh, as you can see, I had the truffle oil that um, Lewis wanted, and now I'm going back into making the uh, corn oil so that I can get these garlic and make the uh, oil of garlics because that'll push us. I mean, they're a thousand each, and it, it takes a lot of resources to make them, but it's very lucrative to do that, and that'll get us to that goal of getting over a hundred thousand, uh, which is what we're going to talk about in the next section of, of what is our roadmap for year two, the rest of year two, and going into year three. As you can see, I'm going to just make some seeds and get that all done so that I can get these back up to being planted because I got other things to do and I did not put anything in the box. So we ran out of time off day one and, and I'm behind the eight ball already. So let's get down to the sewer and talk to Krobos and go find out what it is we need to do. Uh, so this is, I guess, where we have... Well, no, we can't go there because that's some kind of a force field blocking the path. So we need to go talk to Krobos and he's going to let us in on a little... Uh, give us a, you know, give us a, a way to get in. He's the one shadow brute you can talk to that doesn't bother you. Uh, so what's that? Yeah, uh-huh, you mentioned it. Oh, yeah, I did have one. I dropped it, though. Uh, yeah, it's in that cave, and I, I'm like, <laughs> you were scared of something in that cave. That's the funny part. Um, there, you know, to, to, to go through this cave and show you that this mutant bug lair or whatever it is, basically it's a pain in the butt just for the simple fact that all it is is um, flies or whatever they moths and these caterpillar things or worm things that are, you know, plentiful, if anything else, and they start turning into flies or mods or whatever they are, and they piss you off. There's nothing really going on here other than the fact that we're just fighting for our lives, and we need to get all the way out to things. Now, there is one other thing you can do. You can you can, you can can fish in the mutant bug lair to come back here with some extra time, which I don't have this week, but maybe during the winter we can come back. Uh, there is one fish that you can catch in the mutant bug lair, and that is the slime jack. And it's a very rare fish, and very, uh, you know, valuable fish at that, and uh, it's not really used for anything else, but... As you can see, it's just a pain in the butt. There's nothing else here but that idea that to get the talisman and then go get the um, get some more bug me if you want to make something else. But uh, yeah, it's, it really is. It's not fun at all. It's a horrible place, and I, I don't want to be here any more than I have to be. So we're gonna get the talisman and get out of here and go back and do other stuff too. So yay, we found the talisman. Let's get out of here because we got to get up to the. Uh, let's get out of here. We get to get to the. Um, the cave. Um, it's only uh, it's 11 o'clock. We're not going to do it today. We're probably going to do it tomorrow. So we're going to go back through the, uh, the the southern entrance of the uh, sewer and head back to the farm to end day two of this week, which sucks because, uh, again, we didn't really get that much done, but I, I did manage to go do all my rounds, and that will give us something. Something. Which, eh, not bad. 6,400, you know, gold. And what did we get? We got uh, with the wild honey alone is 560 for four of those. But the truffle oil, 1491, that's what that extra perk on there. And the va the mayonnaise and the, and the jellies help out a lot. So those are things that are really great. That's going to get it push us closer to where we want to be. Now, here we are on day, uh, day three of the week, and I haven't done much except get some stuff in the bin. And I actually haven't checked the TV. I really need to do that to check to see if we're going to have any luck in the mine this week because I really want to go look for that prismatic shard. Uh, but they're slightly annoyed today, so and since it's raining, can't do anything on the farm, we don't have to do any of the other stuff. I think, oh, we got some uh, amethyst from Demetria. Um, yeah, oh, well, that's great. I haven't even checked the, the, the pots for a while, so, you know, <laughs> that got pushed to the wayside. So, I think what we need to do is talk about what we're going to do for the next couple of years. Uh, anyways, I can see I, I finally got some uh, star fruit, and that involves a challenge that involved Kent. I know that I joked about Kent and Jody and the whole thing in the first couple uh, of years, but there is really a, a, a gr very lucrative uh, reason for bundling, getting that quest, and getting um, star fruits done, because I can make a lot of money off of the artisan wine, but I have to age them in casks, and that means I have to get the house uh, upgraded all the way to get a cellar. 
Uh, that'll be one thing. And I can't get a lot of that stuff without Iridium without going to the bottom of the Skull Cavern, which is one of the things I wanted to talk about. But for now, we're going to give star the Starfruit to uh, Ken here, and that helps, helps us out a lot. I don't want to give him a really, really good one. I gave him, you know, uh, a, a, a Silver Star one because I want to keep the others for myself. And, uh, you know, I guess things are okay between me and Ken. He's a good guy. Oh, I think Abigail... What is... Well, what are you doing hanging out behind the trash can? I'm talking to me about hanging out in the trash can. What are you doing behind the bar there, kid? You know, you're not supposed to be here. All right, so let's go take on this... Uh, whoop! This... There's like a duck... A stu what the hell is that thing? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's... Uh, well, we got some time. We got nothing else better to do. Let's go in here and see if we can find... Ooh! We just got zipped away to something else. Okay, now we're in a new land. It looks like the bug lair, but it's a... Uh, the hell is a damn monkey doing here? Oh, that's a gob, a henchman. You want to pass? I'm sorry, it's private property. Oh, I'm sorry, but I can't let you pass. Uh, oh, okay, well, fine. We got another quest to do uh, now. We have to get past the henchman, and there's not a lot of ways to know what to do without that, unless you actually have read any of those books that you found, those lost books that you take to Gunther. There's actually a book that talks about what goblins like, and one of them is Void Mayonnaise. So if you take Void Mayonnaise to the Goblin, he will uh, move aside, which is a great thing. Cool. Yay. Now I can go with our Void Mayonnaise back into the, uh, the, the Witch's Hut area and get rid of this guy. There you go. Sniff, sniff. Hmm, that smell? Huh? I can't resist. Give me that. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> he just takes off. He just buggers off. Doesn't really matter. All right. Let's get in there and figure out. Now, what the heck are these statue things here? My goodness, what is this? You try not to make eye contact with with what? With the bone? Dark Shrine of Night Terrors. Uh, okay, that will give you monsters on the farm if at nighttime if you want it. I don't want that. So we're you know that would be just something you could do, but I don't want to do it. Uh, Dark Shrine of Memory. This will uh, if you want to divorce your spouse, <laughs> it'll make it seem like you were never married. And Dark Shrine of Selfishness uh, will turn uh, kids into doves and they will fly away and they will be gone forever. Yeesh. But uh, here's what we want. I just can't pick up the magic ink for some reason. I don't know why. Um, no, I don't want to talk there. Well, we went back. Okay. Hmm. Where are we? Now where the hell are we at? What is this thing? What is the thing over here? This is uh, Shrine of Illusions. Oh, we can change your appearance. If you really want to change your appearance, you pay 500 gold. That's kind of an odd thing to have in the Witch's Hut. Uh, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But now we're, well, this is not much of a witch's hut. This is like a library. This is a pretty cool place. Where the hell are we, though? Uh, huh. Interesting. But it turns out you're back. That, that's the music sounds familiar. Yeah, you're back in the wizard's castle. So why does he have a, uh, a secret entrance from his castle into the, 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 the witch? And why he doesn't really have anything to do with us. We need to go back and figure out how to get that stupid thing. So, so we have to go back into the witch's hut and get this ink. And I think we can uh, mm, fart around with it. No, that doesn't work. Uh, how, how the hell do we get it? Uh, oh, okay. Apparently you have to be in a specific spot to get the, the magic. So we found the wizard's lost magic ink. Better return it to him. Yeah, sure. We should. We should get that totally to him because we have things we want to do with that. So we talked to the, uh, yeah, we find your ink, we talked to the wizard, and he's, like, all happy about it. And he's like, er, uh, okay. I don't, you know, I don't understand his, uh, oh, he's like, did you happen to see my ex-wife? <laughs> I think she lives alone, do you, you know. <laughs> Obviously, dude hasn't gotten over her. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so, you know, everybody's got a little bit of a, a, you know, a sad story here in Stardew Valley. That's kind of a funny thing. But anyways, he's wondering about a reward. Yeah, we were kind of wondering about it. Give us, give us the, uh. Uh, oh, okay, you've given us the gift of knowledge, apparently. There's a book on this little uh, thing here. But actually, what this is, it's a book of summoning, and it's just another... Um, it's kind of like Robin's Place, where you can buy buildings. You can buy buildings here and put them on the farm, and they are actually like magical buildings. And, you know, he ends up with saying thank you, which is nice of him. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get down here and check this book out and see what we can actually buy to put in the uh, thing. So we got a Jamino hut where they can, they will, that's a lot of, wow, a lot of stuff to, uh, to harvest the crops around us. So that will, you know, you can put it on your farm and they will harvest the crops and you don't have to worry about doing it. That's a, a good efficient use of uh, your time if you have the money and the resources to do so. Kind of a neat thing. What else we got here? Earth Obelisk, we can warp directly to the mountains. Holy crap, look at the price on that. Iridium bars alone and the gold. And that one, oh my gosh, go to the beach. You probably still have to use a talisman to get back. And this gold clock will prevent debris from appearing on your farm. 
keeps fence from the cans. Kind of a nice thing. However, I think that would be counterproductive if you want to get hay. So, and speaking of hay, it's laid out. Let's go uh, home. Um, I think I'm going to build some more kegs, or I'm sorry, more tapping uh, tappers to put on these trees that I started to grow here. I forgot all about them. And that's still, we can make you know, mead and all kinds of cool stuff with, with, our, uh, with the stuff that comes out of the tree, so we don't want to forget about that. Uh, that would be a good thing to have. Yeah, we got to do that too. Huh? And the week is half over, and we got to go to bed, and hopefully we get some good stuff from uh, what we put into the, the box to help us on our way. We got 84,000 gold. We need to get up to 100,000 to uh, go on the next leg of uh, upgrades that we want. Um, well, that's not too bad. 3,700. That's pretty good. 3847, not too shabby. We'll take it. Uh, and like I said, that puts us right up to about 87, 80. No, actually, uh, yeah, 88. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. Cockadoodle do. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, 87, 930. That's good. So let's check the weather report. See, if we can finally get a day of goodness to uh, good luck to go out to the uh, the thing. Oh, they're a good humor today. Let's go. Let's go do some digging. Uh, and killing some monsters and, and get out there. And, and oh, blackberry season. Now, of course, this is a bug, of course. Uh, the blackberry season doesn't start till the 8th. The next week, it's not blackberry season. So, oh, so what was I talking about before? I need to get this coffee grown because we're going to need coffee for the, uh, the, the cavern, skull caverns. And I'll explain that in my next part of the, uh, what are we going to do here? Well, here I am nearing 100,000 gold on hand, which means I can definitely upgrade the house one more time this season. But that gets me just the kids' rooms. I mean, the real goal is to get the cellars. So I can get the casks up and running. And I can start aging artisan goods to iridium quality. But at least I can bundle the goal of maxing out the house and getting set up for um, marriage or kids throughout the winter. So I can sort of, I can get those things smashed together, which is what I like to do. So come spring uh, year three, we can start tracking birthdays and giving gifts. But year three also comes with some interesting new things involving the farm itself. Uh, another one of those goals is that darn key or chi or whatever his name's challenge, which requires me to reach level 25 of Skull Cavern. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to need to do a lot of prep. And I still need to find a prismatic shard, which I'm trying to find this this uh, week, in order to get the galaxy sword, which we'll show later if I ever I get it. But that means a lot of monster monster hunting in the games. Now, shadow brutes and shaman, shadow shamans or whatever they're called are the easiest way I know how to get one. You can get one possibly from nodes and geos, but that's not a given. The monsters are always going to be there. I just need to have luck on my side, which means uh, a close eye on the TV, something I failed to look at for the first two days of this week. And I also want to have stuff like coffee on hand because getting through the Skull Cavern takes time, and with taking coffee with you, it speeds up your, uh, your movement so I can get out of the Skull Cavern, get back on the bus, and get back home before I run out of time. I also want to clear out some of these other non-time quests because it's easy gold and friendship. Now, I know I've joked about the whole Kent and Jody relationship early on in the game, but Kent's quest for a starfruit kind of aligns with my other goals. So completing it gets me on the path to some great artisan goods. Starfruits are one of the most valuable things in the game, and iridium-quality starfruit wine is something like 600, I'm sorry, 6,300 gold with those artisan skill perks tacked on. By the time I reach the end of year three, I want to have the greenhouse laid out to just grow primarily star fruit and ancient fruit. Uh, I guess iridium quality ancient fruit is like also very, very valuable, coming in at something like 4,600 gold. Heck, I might spend an entire year of the game just turning over star fruit and ancient fruit into wine and then load them into the casks for the rest of the year for aging. But I'm not sure how much time is needed for that just yet. I need to do some more research. And I've also got a rare seed growing in the greenhouse, and I'm going to just keep making them back into seeds after they grow to the... Uh, um, I guess they're the star gem, whatever, berry gem or whatever they're called. And I'll just have like a row of, of the greenhouse for them. And this weird looking jelly thing, I think it's a purple slime. Uh, it might be a black. No, I don't think it's a black one. It's more like a purple one. Uh, the star on their head, that means they're a special slime. They get replaced by, I think, as you go through and clear out some of the mine, they come back later and they replace them. And he is a, a big boy. And he will probably drop stuff that's like thermal boots or anything like that. Um... Not exactly the best of, uh, you know, I already have this uh, more, uh, the thermal boots aren't as good as the space boots, so you know, that's always good. But uh, we want to, you know, continue to walk through here and, and get some, some great uh, loot, hopefully get that prismatic sharp. We didn't get it today, we still got a few days left, let's see how we did on the week end, or the, the day's end. 
day five, we got two more days, and I didn't do I didn't do anything. I didn't put anything in the th- in the bin. I was too busy doing other stuff. I wanted to head out to the mine and get that done, and that did not help us at all. Cool boy. Okay. So day six, not too much else happening on day six. We're going to go back to the mine. I think if the luck is with us and the spirits are very happy today, it's a very good indication that I am going to go out. And we got uh, more uh, fresh lobster. I will do that because it's 800 gold. Now, the thing I did find out is that if I don't give Clint, or I'm sorry, if I don't give Gus a gold star lobster, I don't get the full 800. I realized that. I only get the, uh, you know, the, the, the small quality. Now, we didn't get a Omni Geode from the uh, the last time we went to the mine. We only got the... Oh, no, we, we, yeah, we actually did get a, a, an Omni Geode. You can get the Prismatic Shards from that. So those are good things to get. So it's always a good thing to go to the mine to, to kill the monsters that may drop the Prismatic Shard. And also use, uh, you know, get Omni Geodes, which can drop a Prismatic Shard. But unfortunately, it gives us uh, a copper... One copper ore. Well, that was just pointless but we did manage to make some oil of garlic uh we didn't find anything out in the uh you know in the the mines did not help us at all uh blew a day on that one <laughs> but uh, there's still sunday but that will help us get to that's where 90,000 gold that's going to help us get to all the way uh to uh 90 or to well uh well, how many i put in there but not, we're going to make some more and put them in there. That'll get us uh, closer to 100,000. But we need to go to bed because it is uh, late. Um, what? Oh, that strange bun. Yeah, I thought about that idea, but I don't want to. I don't really care about uh, putting monsters on the, uh, the the farm. So let's not do that. <laughs> let's just go to bed. <laughs> I guess we can, you know, always either go back through the 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 the, the train station. Oh, we we got uh, the crystallarium now. Uh, we can build a crystallarium. That's yay. But we did good. Oh my goodness, forty nine fifty eight just on artisan goods. Another thousand on foraging. Two thousand on the other. That is a great thing. But we can go to the wizard hut. We can or the wizard's castle. Where we can go through the other place, uh, through the train station to get back into the uh, to do those things. But uh, let's see here. Let's hope one more day of good luck would be great. Good humor. All right. We can now and uh, go. Uh, fruit salad. Oh, there's a Wiggles reference if I ever saw one. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen that on, on, on the Wiggles. And what else did we get in the mail? We got a lot of mail this week. Uh, we got another batch of hay from Marnie. Well, that was nice of her. And we started off the week with 30 pieces of hay. She gave us more. How? We, we, we actually need to get... That's one thing you don't want to have... I don't think I want to have the, um, the, t the clock on the farm because I will not get the hay. And I need to go make sure I have that growing and make sure I don't forget to go get the last of the hay around the farm before the end of the year. Otherwise, it goes away. I still have like a bunch of it in the uh, one of the bins that I don't want to kept just in case. Um, but I need to get out. It's already 10 a.m. Like, geez, I need to get out to the the, the the mines and get that taken care of. But first, we want to process the geodes we found from the day before and hopefully maybe find something in there. But these are magma geodes, and they're not all that great either. So we've got a bunch of stuff we've already had in the past, so that's not going to help us any in the future. But I got another one of these dwarf gadgets, and I can give that one to Gunther. Because I have the other one in the cave. Now, d dwarves love those things. And apparently, I mean, I got more than one. So that's probably probably not too bad. But I will keep hold on to that one for a while, for now. All right, let's let's uh, let's go give uh, Gus his lobster. So he can make his lobster bishk. And, like, again, we didn't give him the best one. We only gave him a regular lobster. So he's only going to give us... Yeah, we know. It's a good one. But he's only going to give us uh, 500 gold, which sucks. We didn't get the full 800 out of that one. If I would have given him a gold star one, it would have happened. Uh, so, well, well, for that being, let's go get into the, uh, actually, you know what? We need to go see, we went to the, um, we went to, yesterday, I got a thing that popped up and said, hey, you've uh, did something here with the, the, we killed enough monsters on the list. So we need to go see Gil at the Adventures Guild, and he will give us a prize. So I don't know which one it was. It might have been the, I don't know if it was the slimes, or it might have been the, the bats, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what it was, but uh, you're not Gil. That's Marlin. Uh, Gil, what are you going to give us? A vampire ring. Uh, gain a little health every time you slay a monster. Well, that would be a great thing to have because we keep getting our butts kicked by those damn bats every time we walk around. So it sucks to get rid of the magnet ring for now. We can only keep two of them in line. I do want to have... Oh, don't want to throw that away. I do want to keep the, the light ring on because it can see in the dark, but the vampire ring will be nice so we can specifically go looking for monsters that will help us out. So here we are. We finally got the Shadow Brute where we wanted to be. And look, we finally got a Prismatic Shard. Hot diggity damn. 
We can now take that to the... Uh, we got another Omni Geo too. We can take that to the uh, the desert next week and get the Galaxy Sword, which we can start making way making preparation. You can see, give that to Gunther, and I don't want to give it to Gunther. I want to use it for the Galaxy Sword. I will wait till the next time I get one. Okay, and that's the end of the voiceover. Hopefully, I didn't sound too stupid for you, uh, but I think we're going to do very well um, this uh, this episode. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to the magnet ring. We're going to put away for now. Um, but we got the prismatic shard. That was the main thing that we wanted to get. Which, and we also get enough gold to, or money or whatever, to uh, go to Robin next week and start work on the house to make room for a basement so that we can start to make some casks. I don't know that I can make the cask just yet. You might have to have the uh, the uh, uh, just have the thing alone, just have the basement alone to get them. I don't know. We'll find out. But that's all for tonight. I think we're going to get headed to bed a little early. We're a little tired. And everything was going great. And we will see you next time. Let's see how well we did. Let's see how well we did. That puts us way over. Way over. And those are 1,000 each. I forgot. Well, good thing. Good thing we had more than that. Um, yeah, the truffle oil alone put us way over. Um uh, truffle oil alone plus the ma the void mayonnaise is put way over so we're in really good shape um so that gets us where we want to be so there you go thanks for watching i hope this format works pretty well we're going to continue on through the rest of the fall like i said and then as winter goes along we're going to do a lot more um not of the the normal stuff we're going to get things ready because remember it's woomaru time next and the third year and we're going to get everybody's birthday down and remember that stuff because you know we don't have facebook right now in in stardew valley we can't uh we can't remember to uh, to check and see whose birthday is when. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for thanks again for watching. Have a good night. Bye bye.